This is a continuation of my last two story times. So if you haven't seen this video or this video, I suggest you watch those first before watching this. So after finding out that my husband had been cheating on me, um, again, with multiple women just recklessly and yeah, I'm in front, I ended up taking my stuff and moving to my mom's house during lockdown, during the pandemic. So I stayed at my mom's for about a month and the whole time I was there, the whole month that I was there, um, he was just on my phone, texting me, calling me. He went through a bunch of different emotions. First, he would call and cuss me out and tell me that I'm talking to someone else and I'm way too calm and I'm mugging him off and what are you doing? I just don't feel like you're being honest with me. Another part of him would be crying, saying that he wants to work this out. He can be a better man. He can change. Man was telling me he can change. He tried a few different methods over the phone and I kind of was just so numb. I felt so numb and so out of it and just so leave me alone. Like, And at the same time, he's still trying to be controlling because I spent my 30th birthday in lockdown at my mom's house. And what I did for my birthday was did my makeup, my hair, put on a cute dress and took some pictures just to post for the gram. I couldn't really think of much else to do during the lockdown so I took some cute pictures and posted them for the gram and I remember I was posting the week of my birthday so it was like I had three different outfits and I was doing the lead up to my birthday. And I remember I posted this picture. I'm actually gonna insert it. I posted this picture and he had such an issue with it. He um, responded saying to have a bit more class. You don't need to be showing, showing everyone that sort of pose. He was just being like real typical him. It was never him to directly say, don't do that. You can't do this. He would just talk, 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 start an argument with me until I would eventually change whatever he didn't like or just not do it at all. That could be for clothing, that could be for going out. He, if you don't want me to go somewhere, he gonna argue until I don't go or he gonna um, talk down on me or belittle me until I don't go. If I, if I decide I wanna wear something and he don't want me to wear it, he's gonna, he's gonna say everything in the book. So I'm not gonna wanna wear it, I'm gonna wanna take it down. So with this picture, he was saying, um, be a bit more classy, saying you don't have to do that. That kind of pose looks like, hey, look at me. Come get me. And I'm just like, this is the man who I have just found out has been cheating on me. And yeah, I'm in front, but he's trying to dictate the pose I do in my picture that I've posted for the lead up of my birthday. So at this point, I'm still listening to him, but I don't know why I'm listening to him. I don't even know why I'm entertaining this conversation. I really and truly shouldn't have even been speaking to him. Sorry, <laughs> because I remember when I posted these pictures, I even posted that particular one on my story only because I did a feed post and then I did a story post and I didn't include that picture in my feed post because I didn't want to hear his mouth. I already know him so well, I already knew. Even though I've left you, I've gone to my mum's, I just, know, I just know how he is, regardless of if I left you or not. That's just how he is. He's gonna say what he wants to say. He's gonna put his two cents in. So I even put it on the story knowing it'll be gone in 24 hours. Like, I don't even wanna hear it. And I still heard it. Cause then he's even comparing it. He's like the one you posted on your page, that one was nice, beautiful, pretty. And then you go on the story and see this and it just ruins it. And he was just doing the most, saying the most, trying to make me feel bad about the picture. Um, just making it be very known that he, he doesn't like it. I remember saying to him, listen, you keep calling and texting my phone for this past month, for a whole month you've been on my phone texting, calling, trying to get me back. This isn't the way that you're gonna get me back. Like, this is control. And I remember saying to him, I don't care what you think about this picture because this is just another form of control and this is exactly what I've been talking about throughout our relationship. I feel controlled and like I can't do anything. I can't wear certain things. I can't go certain places and I'm done with it, especially after everything I've seen. You've done the most to try and beg for me back, but yet you're still coming in here dictating what kind of pictures or poses I should do to post for my birthday. And I, and I remember my birthday pictures weren't up yet and I had a see-through, like kind of, see-through mesh dress covered in diamantes for my actual birthday day pictures and I said if you're acting like this over this pic what are you gonna do when you see the pics I post on my actual birthday because them ones I'm wearing a, I'm wearing a see-through dress and you ain't about to tell me nothing like you can't tell me anything so you cannot actually tell me nothing and then he starts saying like I don't want to tell you anything I'm not trying to control you I'm just trying to look out for you um, I want you to look your best and um, pe people will look at you a certain way I don't want anyone to look at you a certain way like you're just you know a whore coming from him right so 
we had that little argument and then I said to him, no, no, I'm definitely not coming back to you. You've been trying to get me to come back to you for a month now. And this, <laughs> this is not helping. I'm not coming back to that. 100% not, I'm not coming back to that. So he insisted that he comes up to my mum's on my birthday to talk to my mum and to see me and spend my birthday with me. And he just wanted to come and eggs up himself in my face. He's like, I need to talk to you in person. I feel like on the phone, you're not understanding. Like I want to speak to you in person. I also want to speak to your mum and explain what I've been going through and let her know that this isn't me and that I'm going to change and I'm going to be the best husband for your daughter. He wanted to do all of that. So he's come over now on my birthday and he's spoken to my mum. When he arrived, and to be honest, spending that day with him, I just knew, yeah, I'm actually going to go back. Like, it was just one of those things where I just felt like, yeah, I'm just going to go back. This is just... It is what it is at this point. I just felt like I've fought so much and for so long, we've got such a history. I just felt like, am I really gonna walk away right now with nothing, start again, completely fresh? I just couldn't see myself doing it. In that moment, I could not see myself starting over. Seeing him just sitting there looking completely lost. He just looked like one lost puppy. Just I just looked at him and I just felt like, do you know what, whatever go for it to me it was like having me in your parents house for how many months begging to try and fix this marriage begging for you to tell me why you want to end the marriage just being so you know down and not myself not eating losing weight losing my hair just crying every day going from that really trying to fight for something and really trying to figure out what else i don't know and he just kept on playing with me to me now finally leaving going to my mum's house and then for him to just start begging for me to come back and doing the most to just stay in my head he would just be in my head and i just felt he was just in my head he was still there he was still there in my head and i just felt like if i don't go back with him he's not gonna make it easy for me he's not gonna give me an easy life he's not just gonna leave me alone he's gonna turn up at my mom's house he's gonna call off my phone he's gonna text off my phone he's gonna do the most and i just really felt like i'm not ready to deal with that and in the first place i wanted to save the marriage so it's like what's changed now all that's changed now is the fact that I found out he's been cheating again and yam in front. And I even started to tell myself, hey, what's so bad about what's so bad about cheating anyway? Hey, who made it a rule that we only have to sleep with one person? He said it doesn't mean anything, right? The girls meant nothing to him. It was nothing. He says I mean something. They meant nothing. So hey, who made the rule that you can't sleep with more than one person? Obviously it doesn't matter to him. So it's not even like he was having an affair where he caught feelings for someone. That is what I'm trying to tell myself to rationalize my decision to go back to this man. That is where my head, that is where my head was at. And I was just really in a lost, confused, drained kind of state. Anything he said to me, I was just like, like I'd, I wouldn't even speak anymore. I wouldn't even go back and forth. I would just be like, mm, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, you said that last time. <laughs> yeah, you said that last time too. Like, okay, stop talking now because you've said all of this plenty of times before and nothing changed. It is what it is. So because of all of the, you've said this all before, I'm not buying it. That's when he's telling me, you know, I'm going to find us a place. I'm going to get it. I'm going to, I'm going to jump back on YouTube and I'm going to, and I feel like YouTube was something he'd always bring up to get back in my good graces because he knew that I stopped making content on my own. So us making content together was the only kind of content that I was doing or willing to do. And every time I would do go back to my solo stuff, it wouldn't really, it wasn't giving me when I was in my prime. Like my prime in my YouTube career, I guess you could say was like 2016, 2015. 2015, 2016, that was like my prime on YouTube where I was making the most money and my content was getting the most views. So anytime I tried to go back to doing my solo stuff, it never had the same effect, which is why I would kind of get discouraged and I would kind of just focus on the couple stuff because couple stuff was always popular no matter how many times we came off and came back on we would still get good views and it would be quite popular and i remember he used to say things um when he would come back to the channel and leave and then come back and leave sometimes i'd be like to him you can't keep doing that you can't keep coming back to the channel because you're playing with our subscribers our subscribers support us and you keep leaving and coming back like you can't keep doing that and leaving me in the lurch as well one minute i feel like we're making money together and then the next minute you've just left me in the dust like you can't do that no more and he was and he would say things like the videos get more views when i'm in them anyway so he would say things like that and then i would see 
that my solo content wouldn't get as many views as it used to. And I would kind of forget that actually I built this platform on my own before he even entered the picture, but it, it became so repetitive, the things he would say and the cycle that I actually started to believe, actually, yeah, they're not here for me, they're here for him. So I felt like in a way sometimes when he would say, I'm gonna jump back on YouTube, he said it in a way as almost as if he was doing me a favor. And I did believe he was doing me a favor. When he's saying to me, if you come back home, I'm gonna find us a place. I'm gonna jump back on YouTube with you. We're gonna make lots of money. I'm gonna change. I'm gonna do the therapy, counseling, whatever you need me to do. And we're gonna be all right. You're gonna get a better husband, better husband than you could have ever imagined. So while he's saying all of this to me, I'm like, okay. All right, yeah, sure, okay, cool. So after my birthday, I ended up going back with him to his parents' house. As Soon as we got back to his parents' house, we started filming content. He was like, I was serious, like, I'm gonna jump back on YouTube, let's start the filming from now. And, and I've also got something, he's had another business venture that was gonna make him a lot of money. Um, he even shared it on our channel to our subscribers. He's like, I'm gonna have money there, we're gonna have money here. I'm also still gonna be there at the gym, we're gonna have money here. He had all these ideas, he even had um, an idea to, to start, to start a shop, an online shop, and that was gonna make money too. So all these sources of incomes, he named me about five different sources of incomes and said he's gonna go get the place. So he's like, yep, we're gonna start filming. We started filming, he's like, okay, let's look for places. So we start viewing places, we're viewing houses. He's like, whichever one that we're gonna pick, we're gonna pick, I'm gonna secure it, and that's that. So we find a place, we get the place. My name's not on the lease, like I said, it was his name and a friend's, and we move in. We're filming content. Our content is getting views. We're making money. Things are going exactly as he said they would go. Everything he had said to me and promised me, it was going that way. We weren't arguing. He hadn't done the counseling. We hadn't even brought that back up again. He was still going to work. He was coming back pretty much it was going the way he said it would go. We even made more channels because we only had the one channel. We ended up making a mukbang channel where we eat. We made a vlog channel where we was gonna vlog. We made a reaction channel where we was gonna react. We made hella channels, all of these channels. He's like, yeah, we're gonna get all of this money. We're gonna get all this money and we're gonna do all this content. So we actually was pretty consistent on the mukbang channel. We didn't do anything really with the reaction channel or vlog channel, but the mukbang channel, we was, we was eating it. The and then on our main channel, we was doing all of the, the tags and the challenges and we started doing pranks and all of this and the views were up, the money was up, everything was sorted. I started to get back into my groove of my own solo stuff. I started doing solo content again. I started recording music again, built like a little home studio. And I was doing my radio work and everything was going well until it stopped going well. The views were up, the money was up, that side of things was sorted and our relationship, we was getting back to being, I guess, ourselves. We were, I won't say happy, but we were happy enough where we could communicate, where we could laugh with each other, where we could spend time with each other. And it felt like we're on the right track. It was going in the right direction until he ended up falling back into depression because like I said, um, he had f fallen into depression before, after the injury. And in the midst of all of this, he had given his life to Christ. So he had now said he wants to fully give his life to Christ. He wants to get baptized. And this to me should have been a good thing. This was positive. This was, oh wow, you're gonna give your life to Christ. But at the same time, the way he used to speak uh, as if he was like disregarding anything he had done in the past, you know, I'm saved now, I've given my life to Christ. He's forgiven me for cheating. God has forgiven me for um, cheating because I've repented, so you kind of need to forgive me now. And he would speak to me in a way where it's almost like he would tell me that I'm gonna go to hell. He wouldn't say that specifically, but the things he would say is like, because you're not doing this, or because you don't know this, or because you're doing that, you need to know where you're gonna end up. and. I want you to end up in the same place as me, which is heaven. And I don't think you're gonna end up in heaven with me until certain things change. Like that's kind of the, the way he would, he would speak. So this positive thing, it became kind of negative real quick because he would use Christ or God to kind of control what I was doing. So beforehand he would just moan and complain or 
try and make me feel silly or belittle me for things to make me not want to do stuff but now he was using God and one of the things I said to him before I ended up coming back to him um from my mum's house back to his mum's house I remember said to him I'm not being controlled anymore after the whole birthday dress picture incident on my Instagram I said I'm not being controlled I'm going to go where I want I'm going to wear what I want I'm going to do what I want I'm going to hang out with who I want and you are not going to tell me anything there's no way that I've just caught you doing the most and I'm going to come back to you and you're still going to have some sort of control over me no and he would always say to me I'm not controlling I don't want and he would always say to me I'm not controlling I don't want to control you I want you to live your best life I want you to be free to, you know I want you to I want you to go for everything and I'm just like okay mm -hmm. until something happens that you don't like and then all of a sudden I'm still controlled knowing this when he started using God and bringing up God and everything it made me feel like okay is he doing this because he knows that I said I'm not going to be controlled anymore but using God will make me listen because if I don't listen then it's coming like I'm a demon it's like why aren't you listening I said God and you're not listening I am I'm a heathen or I am I'm going against God and it's like why are you putting me in a position where you're seeming like you're trying to make it seem like I'm going against God because, because I'm not listening to what you are telling me to do and he would just preach constantly 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 he would preach constantly he would preach I remember even one time, it was in December, we was in Tesco, it was a supermarket, we was getting some food shopping and they were playing Christmas carols. When it gets to Christmas time, they start playing all the Christmas songs. And um, one of my favorite Christmas songs is, simply having a wonderful Christmas time. So they were playing that song and obviously I'm dancing, I love that song, I'm always dancing to it. It used to be our Christmas song to be fair. It was our Christmas song that we both liked and shared together. Like, yeah, this is our Christmas song. And um, I remember this time now where the, the song comes on and then he starts going on a run about how do you know what Christmas means and do you know who Saint Nicholas is and saying that it's basically a devil's holiday and we shouldn't celebrate it and he just started going on a run and going on and on and I can't even repeat everything he said um, because I, I, the things he the things he would say they would just so they'll come so fast and just so random he would just go on and on and basically in the end it's like he was trying to make me feel bad for dancing to the Christmas song or liking Christmas or wanting to celebrate Christmas and I remember saying to him I was like you know Christmas is kind of like a thing for me and my family as long as you've known me every year we spend Christmas with my family and my mum cooks big meal I contribute as well to the cook like we this family time we see that as our family get together celebration time and you're just trying to like take that away from me and he's like no I'm not saying that you can't that you can't do that or whatever but I just I personally don't want to celebrate Christmas anymore and I personally won't be partaking in such holidays or whatever and I'm just like where does that leave me we're supposed to be together as a married couple and my husband doesn't want to celebrate Christmas but that is like a tradition for my family and I don't want to stop celebrating Christmas and he would just always bring up God and everything like we couldn't even sit down and watch Netflix without someone an actor on the Netflix movie or show saying something like Jesus Christ or god damn it and then he would pause the thing or maybe he won't even pause it he would just speak over the whole entire show and say you see he'd be like see they put it right in your face they're they're blasphemous why are they um why are they damning damning god or why are they saying that why do you think they're saying that there's a deeper meaning they know what they're doing they're trying to this they're trying to that the world is going to end and just all these things that he would say like we couldn't do normal activities together anymore because somehow he would bring up the fact that this is against God. So that kind of caused a strain in us repairing our relationship and our marriage because the things that we used to do to bond together, we now couldn't even really do because God. And I still felt like I was being controlled, even down to things I would wear. I remember I wanted to join the gym. He had every excuse and reason in the book why I shouldn't join the gym. He said I should stay at home, do home workouts. Um, he just had so many excuses why I'm not going to want to go to the gym. You're not going to want to drive there. You're going to waste your membership. Oh, there's chavs at the gym. You're not going to want to go there with a bunch of chavs. Oh, um, you're not going to know how to do that. Or you're going to like, just all these excuses of why I shouldn't go to the gym. And then I remember I ordered a bunch of cute gym sets from, um, Bowen T. I got like the little sports bras, leggings, shorts, 
um, those tight like t-shirt type compressor compression tops I had like a I had like a bunch of different gym sets to start the gym he had a problem with that he's like you don't have to wear that to go to the gym you know girls don't usually wear that when they go to the gym I'm like okay so what do girls normally wear he's like you can just wear like basketball shorts and a t-shirt or joggers and a t-shirt or a vest or something you don't have to wear like matching leggings and sports bras and I'm like yeah that's fine but I want to I want I want to I want to wear cute gym sets when I go to the gym he had a problem with that um went as far as to tell me you know well you, you can't wear that because I could see a camel toe <laughs> and said that all well, the guys are gonna laugh at me and they're gonna call me the camel toe girl and I just kept on saying I don't care I don't care okay what now I'll be known as the camel toe girl now what and then you know what he said to me he's like well if you ain't gonna cover up for me then cover up for Jesus like those are the sort of things he would do to try and still dictate and control what I had going on and I really now as I said we were filming content together and we were making really good money filming content together but surprise surprise he decided he no longer wanted to film content it didn't align with his beliefs anymore and it also just he just didn't want to do it he had no passion there and he didn't want to do it and this time I didn't even I didn't even ask why or question why or try and fight or plead like oh no we're making so much money and this is going great and remember this is what you promised me you promised me that we was going to come here you was going to get this house we were going to pay the bills and make content and do all of that together you told me that's what we was going to do I didn't even care at this point I'm like this is typical of you even though you sw even though you swore up and down like he swore up and down and promised he swore up and down and promised when i tell you lot he even signed a contract <laughs> okay a contract saying he was going to do this cuz remember his friend's name is on the lease and his friend is saying listen my name is on the line so how do you plan on keeping the rent paid so i don't get in no shit so there's so there's contracts written out where he's saying I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. I am going to do content with my wife Diana. And he's now decided, nope, I don't want to do it anymore. But around the same time, he's fallen back into his depression. So I'm feeling like okay, he doesn't want to do it really because I guess he's depressed again. But at the same time, this was supposed to be him fighting for me back. This was supposed to be him fighting for my trust. This was supposed to be him making it up for everything he's done. So when he was in this depression, I'm just like, all right, cool. We're not going to make any money together. I'm going to make money. I have a way. He also stopped going to the gym. So he wasn't training any clients. He was pretty much in the house all day, every day. Sometimes he would sit in the same spot for hours. Like he would either be on his laptop or he would just be watching TV or he would sleep. There was a point in time where he would just sleep all day. Like he would, sometimes I'd go in there and ask him like, do you want to eat? Have you eaten? Are you going to get out of bed? Are you going to go take a shower? Are you going to something? But it, so around this time is when I decided to launch a brand called WG, which stands for We're Gonna. Our couple's channel was called We're Gonna Film Stuff. And then we had like our mukbang channel, We're Gonna Eat Stuff, We're Gonna Vlog, We're Gonna React. That was like our thing was We're Gonna. So I, I decided, okay, let me launch a brand called WG, We're Gonna and you can be in the back end how about you help behind the scenes we launch this brand you don't have to be on camera and we can make some income let's start our business and make i thought let's try and take our brand offline since you don't want to do youtube anymore and you don't want to make videos and you don't want to be seen on camera because you're telling me you don't want to be seen on camera for multiple different reasons okay let's launch a brand so i did all the groundwork i designed all of the track suits i sourced all the fabrics the materials i paid for the first stock i made the website um i, I did like a bunch of stuff i basically launched the entire brand i'm like i'm gonna sort out the whole brand and then once we launch let's run this together, let's run this business together. He's telling me, nah, he doesn't want to, he hasn't um, got time for it. He's gonna try and now work on this this shop web website thing that he was trying to do with his friend. So he's now working on that. He just had no interest, basically. I made the um, brand with him in mind to try and help him, but, but he just weren't interested in the brand. So I'm like, okay, fair enough, because at first he was kind of like, okay, yeah you could and he seemed like he was giving ideas and being a little bit enthusiastic about it but when it came time for its actual launch he's just like actually no I'm yeah you can do all of that don't expect me to be there to do any of it with you so at that point I feel like I'm done trying to help and trying to do things to to get you back on your feet because this is the same thing that happened when he went into depression before. I tried to help him out, tried to hold it down, be there for him. This time I felt like I was trying to do the same thing. I'm like, okay, cool. 
let me try and think put my thinking cap on to try and make our situation easier and make it that we don't lose any money but he wouldn't know parts of it so fair enough I had also started live streaming on this app, this app called Bego. They wanted to pay me to live stream on their app and I was making a really good income doing that. And, and with live streaming, to make the good income, you're on there for hours, you're on there in the night, you're on there different hours of the day. It's like, it's like whenever you stream, that's an opportunity to make money. So I didn't have to stream for hours. The app actually only paid me to do six hours in total within a whole month. So I was only required to do six hours for the whole month and they were gonna pay me. And I did that, but then I did more. I would go on there probably every day. Um, I would be on there for hours. And every time I was on there every day and for hours, I was making more money by getting gifted on the app. That's how the app worked. So I was making, so I was making really good money on this app. And he would start to say, I don't feel like I spend time with you anymore. You're always online. I don't even get to talk to you. You don't come to bed. And I'm trying to explain to him I'm making a lot of money especially at night I would make more money at night so I'm like yeah I hear you but right now we're not filming content you've decided you don't want to do YouTube anymore and you've also gone back into your depression so you're you're not even going to the gym you're not even training clients so I don't even know where you're still getting your half of the rent from because before we was paying our bills and our rent with the income we made together now that we weren't making income together we had gone back to doing 50-50, my money that I make, your money that you make, we put it together to pay these bills 50-50. And he was coming up with his, his half of the bills every month. However, he weren't working, so I don't even know where this money was coming from, if it was just savings or what have you, because he weren't working. Like I said, he weren't leaving the house. He was in the house all day, every day. Just, so I'm like, listen, I don't know what you got going on, but I'm gonna keep making money on this app. If I can make money live streaming, as much money as I have been making, and I'm able to pay my bills, I'm able to still get little things for myself, I'm able to still put money into music, I'm able to do and be free as I please, I'm gonna I'm do what I've gotta do in every avenue. At this point, I'm doing sponsorships now, I'm doing like Instagram sponsorships, I'm doing the live streaming, I'm still doing my radio work, I've started jumping back onto my own solo content on YouTube again, so I'm in a couple different pots and I'm just, I'm out, here, I'm out here hustling. I still continue with the WG brand on my own. That was a success. Sold out of um, one set of tracksuits very quickly. It was going well. Like for me, I was in all different pots and it was going well. But he was starting to complain about the lack of time spent together. And then he started to bring up um, God and Jesus again by saying the things that I was doing on the app was demonic. I remember I was doing um, music battles. So me and a few other people on the app would do music battles where it's like 90s versus 80s or hip hop versus this. Or like you pick an artist versus an artist and then you just play songs back to back. And um, I remember he had joined the app as well. So because I was making money on the app and I was literally paid just to do the minimum hours, he was now intrigued and he was like, okay, do you know what? I would want to try this out and I would want to do the minimum hours. He weren't planning to go on there and be on there for hours like I was. He wanted to do his six hours, get paid like I did and then go about his business. So he wanted to try and do that. He even tried to finesse the app where he didn't actually have to stream. There was like some little trick that you could do where it would make it seem like you're live, but you're not really live. So he just wanted to try and do that to get the money. So because he had joined the app, I had obviously brought him into the kind of circle that I knew on the app. And we were doing this music battle stuff. And I remember I'd asked him to come on one time. I was like, come on, jump on one time, do a music battle with us. And he agreed to do it at first. And then days later, the day of the music battle, he was like, I don't want to do this. This app is a devil app. I'm coming off of it. I'm not going to be on it. And even what you're doing, you're in there, you're playing Beyonce, you're playing Beyonce on live and you're just, just spreading, spreading um, Satan's music and she's a witch and all the saying all of these things and bringing God into it again and basically saying the music battles I'm doing are demonic and therefore Satan, they're not for God. And it just had so much negative things. It's like you log onto the app and you see tarot cards and tarot readings and that's all demonic and just... And it was just like another reason to just, you know, all right, let me come off the app then. Since, you know, it's demonic. It just seems like everything I'd done was blasphemous to him during that time. Everything I did was blasphemous. I also made a friend, Chai, that you guys have seen on my channel. I met him on that app. I started spending time with him and he didn't like, 
He didn't like Chai. He didn't like my friendship with Chai. He didn't like my friendship with Chai. People started trolling on the app, but this time they were trolling him. They weren't trolling me or trolling him. They were saying that me and Chai was having an affair. Just doing the most and getting in his head because he would argue with me, look what they're sending me, look what they're saying, and you're gonna go out with that guy and you're gonna be out with that brother. And it's like you're out with that brother when you already know what people are saying and you know that people are trolling me. Like it was just a lot. Everything was an issue. Every single thing was an issue to the point where I just was like, I don't wanna do this anymore. I, I don't wanna be with you. This is long. You're still trying to control me. I'm now blasphemous. I'm now a demon. I'm now this, I'm now that. I'm good. And around the same time, also, I had found porn on his laptop. And not only was he watching porn, he was just searching up weird things on YouTube. Like, he would search up on YouTube girls twerking or girls working out in the gym in bikinis and just just really creepy stuff and I addressed it with him and I remember he broke down to me he started crying that's when he confessed to me I've got a porn addiction and I want help I want help for it I'm trying um this is why I've repented this is why I found Christ because this is a real thing people go through this look it up look it up he goes so many people go through it he was like look even Terry Crews went through it. he's like look up Terry Crews he'll talk about it where he had a porn addiction and he fought it because he gave his life to Christ and I'm just listening to him and I'm like okay okay if this is what you think you've got and you've acknowledged it okay good on you if you can fix yourself fix yourself but at this point i didn't care like it weren't even a thing of oh my gosh why are you doing this behind my back how could you do this to me i had kind of already registered in my head yeah th this is a you issue this ain't even a me issue no more i'ma do me you can do you i just kind of already clocked out i clocked out by then and i'm just like mentally i'm not here anymore so you breaking down and telling me you've got a porn addiction, it's like, I weren't even phased. He starts telling me things like he's never viewed women as human. He views women as objects. He doesn't, he doesn't feel anything. He says even when he's, he's cheated and he's had sex with all these women, he feels nothing. He doesn't even view them as a human. It's just like an object and he has no care for nothing. And then obviously he proceeds to tell me that with me it's different. I'm the only woman and the first woman he's ever actually loved and he actually feels something. And when we have sex, it's a completely different feeling to when he's had sex with all these other people. So I'm just like, at this point, I'm like, I don't, I don't really care. <laughs> literally at this point I'm just like I don't care whether you see women as objects or nothing feel nothing feel numb robot addiction I don't care what it is I just know that I'm doing me that's how I felt at the time and I'm like listen I don't want to be with you I don't want to be together but he's of course now using his depression why would you leave me when I'm in this state I need you more than ever right now you can't leave me he started you know kind of hinting at suicide he would say things like I'm just gonna end it or um, thanks a lot, Dad, you know, thanks for leaving me when I'm at my lowest or thanks for doing this when I have nothing right now. I feel like I just want to die. I'm just going to off myself and thank you so much for leaving me at this time. So when he would say things like that, obviously, so when he would say things like that, obviously I don't want him to do anything stupid and I don't want him to try and, you know, harm himself. So I'm like, okay, fine. If you can fix this, fix it. Cause he would still be telling me, yes, I'm in a bad place right now, but I'm going to get out of this. I want, I, I need your help to get out of this. Like I need you. He would almost make it seem like it's my responsibility to try and help him out of the state that he's in. So of course, so of course, I tried to help. Um, I remember I called his uncle round, who's a pastor. He's the, the man who married us. Tried to get him, you know, to, to help. Prayed over us, prayed for him. Like I tried a few things, but nothing was really changing. Nothing was changing. And even after, after I'd found all like the porn and stuff on his laptop, I remember I found it again. And he had said to me, it's hard. Like you can't just quit it straight away. Like I'm trying, this is why I'm on YouTube, typing in other things like twerking. Cause it's like, I'm, t I'm telling myself this isn't that bad. It's not full on porn, but it's still like something that I'm trying to see to get my fix. And I'm just like, yeah, this is, this is too much. This is actually a lot. Like I don't, I really don't want to deal with this. Even down to me being friends with gay people because I have gay friends. He would, he would try and make me feel bad for that and say, when you're with your, with your gay friends, are you preaching to them? Are you giving them the word? Are you telling them the gospel? Are you letting them know the truth? It would always be the truth. Are you letting them know the truth? Or are you just sitting there gossip because gossiping is a sin and you shouldn't be um, friends with these people who lead a lifestyle 
against against God and you're not trying to tell them the, the truth. He's like, I'm not saying don't be friends with them. He's like, but you should be telling them the truth and you should be spreading the message and letting them know so we can all go where we're supposed to go, which is heaven, right? And it, and it just became too much where I was just like, yeah, I don't want to do this because of the whole don't leave me now while I'm in my worst place ever. I gave him more time. I'm like, all right, cool, give you more time. So like he slowly started to pick himself back up. He started going to the gym again. He started taking clients again. And slowly he was trying to, you know, get back to, I guess, some sort of normality. And then I remember there was another thing that happened where he'd become friends with this female personal trainer and he had lied about how he knew her, lied about how he met her, lied about meeting up and going to the gym with her. And these times they were doing sessions together. They were training together, just them two behind my back. And I ended up finding out and he said, oh, I didn't tell you because I knew how you would be. And I was trying to avoid anything, but I'm telling you now, nothing's happened. We're just friends. I just feel like I can't be normal. I feel like I can't make a new gym body or a new workout buddy and without you thinking something or without it being a big deal he's like if it was a guy if it was a man that I had gone and made my gym buddy that wouldn't have been a problem but because she's a female I knew that it would be an issue that's why I didn't tell you but I promise you there's nothing going on and I want you to meet her and blah 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 I'm like that's all fine and dandy but you lied <laughs> You lied about knowing her, you lied about how you met her, you lied about the fact that you guys are doing training sessions behind my back. It's just all lying, but at this point I weren't even like angry and arguing and saying no. I'm just like, do your thing. At this stage I feel like, do your thing. Do whatever you want to do. Just talk to whoever you want. At this time I didn't have none. Just talk to whoever you want. At this time I didn't have none of his passwords, I didn't want them. I was at a place where I felt like if he's going to cheat again, I'm going to find out regardless. And he's going to do it regardless. It don't matter what passwords I have. It don't matter where I tell him not to go or try and control certain situations so he don't. I was like, I don't want to. I was like, if I have to do all of that to get a man to not cheat on me, I don't even want to be with you. So if you're going to do it, do it so I can find out and I can be done with this because you're over here begging me and you're over here acting like you want to change and do all of this, but you're still lying to me. You're still doing silly things. You're still like, do you know what I mean? So during that point in my life, I just felt like do whatever you want. Be you. Be exactly who you are because I'm going to see it and I'm going to find out regardless. And I don't want to control or disrupt you or disrupt you. I'm going to let, listen, if it's cheating you want to do, I'm going to let you cheat in peace. Because I promise you when I find out, and I will find out, there's no more begging you can do after that point. It's like I've taken you back twice now after big infidelity. So again, what would be the reason now? I didn't care to see and check up what he was doing. I genuinely didn't care. When I got to that point of genuinely not caring what he was doing, who he was talking to, where he was going, I knew I was done. I knew I was done from then, but I'd still stayed with him because obviously he keeps begging me to stay. I still stayed, but I knew in my head I was gone. It was literally just his depression that was kind of holding me there. So now it gets to a point where my niece, Aaliyah, she is in a situation where she can go to foster care. She had no other family members that can step in for her but me. I didn't want my niece to go to foster care, not at all. And um, neither did he, neither did he. We had a long discussion about it. He obviously knew I want to take my niece in. We had looked after her and babysat her um, before all of this happened. So he'd been around her. He was familiar with her. He loved her. So our little baby niece. So when it got to that, we had a discussion and he was for it. He was completely supportive of it. I told him, listen, regardless, I didn't even ask him, is it okay? to take my niece in. I told him I'm taking my niece in. At this point, you have no say in anything I do in my life because I already don't want to be with you. So you have no say in anything I do. So I told him I'm taking my niece in. I will be looking after her and like, okay, what's your response kind of thing? Because it's going to happen regardless. Um, but he was here for it. He was willing to support me. He wanted to support me. He didn't want Aaliyah to go to um, foster care either. So he was for it. We ended up starting the process of becoming her legal guardians together. We were both, we were both filling out the paperwork. We were both doing the meetings. Um, we were both being assessed, both of us. As a married couple, we were being assessed to have my niece. So while all these assessments are going on, we're still fixing us. He's trying to fix us. And he's saying now more than ever that Ali is gonna come to live with us, we need to fix this. I want us to fix this so we can be happy and bring her into a happy environment. So I agreed. I said, I 100% agree. I don't want Aaliyah to be around 
anything to anything toxic so yes we can fix this let's do that maybe things will change now that we've got a little baby to look after and things were going all right for a while things were going all right we started the process filled out the paperwork, everything was going good. He has a bond with Aaliyah, he's happy Aaliyah's there. And it's all right, while Aaliyah's there, everything is actually going all right. But then there will still be little forms of control, still little things, little remarks, little things, just little things that I'll just be like, nah, you're not actually gonna change and I'm not dealing with it. And I got back to a point where I'm like, I don't wanna be with you because you're still the same way, you're still the same person. Everything I, do, everything I don't like, you're still doing. And every time I would say to him, I'm done and I don't want to be with you, he would say, but what about Aaliyah? Like, Aaliyah needs two adults, you and me raising her. He would use Aaliyah as like a crutch to be like, no, you can't leave me because I've already started the process with the paperwork. I'm going to be her legal guardian just like you. So it would be certain things like that where I'm just like, I felt like I was stuck and forced to be with him because of we've started the paperwork with social services and um, he's saying why would you want to raise her by yourself single let me help you let me be there for you like you can't do this on your own let me help you I kind of felt like am I stuck now because my niece is in this situation and I'm stuck because he keeps saying let me help you and I've started the paperwork and obviously I don't want social services to get wind of any issues because if they get wind of any issues in my marriage they're not going to give Aaliyah to us why would they why would they why would social services give a child to some dysfunctional toxic couple they had no idea in front of them we're painting on this happy smile this perfect picture yes everything's great when I know it's not, of course it weren't all bad. There was good moments while Aaliyah was there, but then there were also still our issues. Our issues were still there regardless. So it got to a point where we were arguing in the house and not even so much me arguing. I was just telling him I didn't want to be with him. I didn't want to be with him. And he just kept on trying different methods every day to get me to stay with him. It was the same things as before. It was the crying, it was crying. It was the anger and cussing me and telling me this and that. And then it was the, you might as well stay with me because the next man is going to cheat on you. And then the next one after that, you're just going to keep leaving all these different men and getting to know all these different men and they will cheat on you. You might as well stay with me where I've done it already. And I'm going to change now. And I've changed already. Like I'm not going to change now. I've changed already and you already know me and we already have a history and I'm gonna help you with Aaliyah and I'm gonna be there for you. Like you might, like all these different ways to try and get me to stay. And I just felt so clocked out and so gone. I was done, I was done being made to feel like I was blasphemous and I was a demon. I was done being controlled, couldn't go certain places, couldn't wear certain things, couldn't be friends with people. He now had a problem with me and my friend Chai trying to dictate who I should make friends with and who I can and can't speak to. And then also doing all of this in front of my niece, who's just an innocent baby. She came to me out of a toxic situation in the first place and now I was gonna keep her in another toxic situation. I just was fed up and I was done. And that is when I finally put my foot down and it took a while, it took a while before he actually left me alone. Um, I, rem I remember I started sleeping in my studio. I weren't sleeping in the same bed as him anymore. There was one incident where I'd gone out with my friend Chai and we had danced together and someone filmed it and sent it to him and trolled him and he, he broke our bed. Um, I remember I came home, he had th the plant pot and all my plants, I had like plants and ceramic plant pots, he threw them, broke them. I came home, plant pot and plant was all over the floor, the bed was broken because he broke it from punching it. Just like all of this and then Aaliyah's living in the house. Aaliyah walks into my bedroom barefoot. She could cut her foot on flipping plant pot. It was just like little things kept on happening where I was just like, I'm done. I'm not putting myself or Aaliyah through this any longer. And that is when I said to him, I'm done. I want a divorce. I don't want you. It's so far. Leave me alone. And of course he didn't leave me alone. He didn't leave me alone. So he lived in the house for months where I told him we're separated, we're done, you know. But he would come into the studio where I was staying every day and try a different method to get me to forgive him or to, to get me to give him another chance. And I just weren't having it. I would listen to him. Sometimes I'd be like, yeah, 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 yeah. Just to get whatever he would say to me and whatever method he would try to get me to reconsider ending our marriage, I just weren't having it. I knew within myself and in my head I was done, but I was leading him on to believe 
that we were gonna fix it and we could fix it. And the only reason I was leading him on is because of the situation with my niece. I, I knew we were going through a whole social services court situation, paperwork had already been filled out. They were assessing us as a couple. I didn't wanna ruin that. I didn't want to jeopardize my niece's future. I didn't want to risk her going into care. I didn't want to. So I made him believe that yes, yeah, we can work on it. But I knew in my head I was done. So to be honest, the tables are kind of turned. The same way when I was in his parents' house begging and fighting for the relationship and the marriage and he just kept on telling me no, no, no. The tables had now turned. I kept on telling him no, no, no. And he just kept begging to try and fight for the marriage. Um, only difference now is we had a baby in the house, my niece, and we had social services in and out of our house also. So at one point he realized I was really serious about separating and divorcing, that he had threatened me now and said that he wasn't going to cooperate with social services anymore. He wasn't gonna take any of the meetings. He wasn't gonna be there when they came and did their visits. He wasn't, he, like he's not picking up the phone to nobody. Like you need to go and tell them that we're not together and they need to now reconsider what they're gonna do about Leah. And I just felt like at that point, how could you be so evil? Like you think you're punishing me, but you're punishing an innocent child. When he would do things like that, I'd be like, okay, fine. Yes, we can work on it. Yes. That situation happened a few times to the point where I just felt like you're not gonna keep using my niece over me to get what you want. Cause that's what it started to feel like. Every time he wasn't getting what he wanted or things wasn't going his way, he would use that because he knew that is where it affected me. He knew how much I wanted things to go smoothly with this and him trying to jeopardize it got me to do what he wanted me to do. Until I got to a point where I was like, do you know what? I'm not doing this anymore. I'm gonna tell social myself. And I remember one time he was texting me, we had a meeting because by now he had moved out. He had, he had moved out. It got to a point where he was like, if we're not gonna be together, I can't live with you. I can't be around you. Even though when we was at his parents' house and he was saying, yeah, I don't wanna be with you, but I'm not gonna kick you out. You can still stay here. We can live, to, we can live with each other until we both get on our feet and then we amicably leave. This time, because I didn't want him, there, there was no live together until we can leave. Because obviously we had a lease and the lease was up. My name went on the lease, but I was still respecting the lease. I'm like, we've got a lease. We've already started the process with my niece in this address. So let's ride it out to the lease is over. And then we can go our separate ways. That's what I said to him. I suggested we stay here till the lease is up. Hope, hopefully by then there was supposed to be a decision about my niece's um, permanent residence. We were supposed to have a decision about my niece in May. The lease ran out in November. So in my mind, there was plenty of time. Like, let's just ride this out. Let's keep it strong until May. Once I get custody in May, then you can do what you want. I do what I want. We don't have to be together. That is what I wanted to happen. But he was like, no, I'm not gonna cooperate. I'm not doing any of this. I'm gonna leave. I can't be in the house with you. I don't wanna be around you. And um, I, I just can't. I can't live with someone I'm separated with and blah, 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 blah. So he ended up moving out and I was in the house with my niece on my own. So he would come back to the house every time social services needed to visit us or have like a meeting. So he would come over and act like, yeah, he's there. Sometimes I would be like, yeah, he's at work. So he can't be here. He's busy. He can't be here. But there's only so many times you could do that. So I remember one time, so one time we had a meeting. He knew we had a meeting. He's texting me. He's like, there's meeting tomorrow. I'm not coming. And I'm like, what do you mean you're not coming? He's like, you don't want to be with me. You're, 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 you're making me continue this lie. And this, he's like, I don't want to be a liar. I'm not a liar anymore. And I'm lying to social services and pretending that we're in a happy relationship for Aaliyah's sake and all of this. Like, I'm not doing it anymore. I'm not lying anymore. You don't want to be with me. So I'm not lying and pretending that we're together. So I'm not going to come. So this was obviously something he had done before. So at this point, I was fed up. I was like, you know what? You're not going to keep hanging this over me. You're not going to keep hanging um this, this situation with my niece over me so i'm gonna text the social worker and i'm gonna tell her myself i texted her and i said hey is there any way that i can now go for custody and guardianship on my own by myself she's now obviously asking questions why do you want to do it by yourself you're married why would you want to not do it with your husband and now she's investigating me and all this stuff is happening and i remember i told because then the next day where we were supposed to have the meeting he's texted me an hour before and said what time the meeting again and i said what do you mean what time is the meeting again you told me last night you're not doing the meeting you're not lying anymore you're not doing this anymore that i better go and tell the truth because he's not involved and you're not gonna answer no calls you're not gonna respond to no emails he's like obviously i was angry diana i was angry obviously i'm not gonna do that why are you so fast why have you gone and text the social worker and told us something i'm like what do you mean you're not gonna keep toying with my life or my niece's life so yes 
you're not gonna tell me that loads and loads of times. Like, yes, you've said it before and then change your mind, but I'm done with you doing that now. This is like the only thing you can use to try and I guess keep me in line and I don't like it. You told me you weren't coming to the meeting and that you weren't involved. So I have now texted a social worker and asked to go for guardianship on my own. And now she's suspicious. So he's like, oh, you should never done that. You're too fast and blah, blah, blah. So she's now come around. She's asking questions. He's come around anyway, but he's acting completely off he's just acting like he's in a bad off he's just acting like he's in a bad mood he's not even trying to pretend i'm like what was the point of you coming here for this meeting if you weren't even gonna try and act like we happy like he was acting so unhappy and moody and rude and snappy he didn't even look at me no eye contact didn't even speak to me didn't even interact with me and the woman's looking at us like okay what kind of married couple is this you guys haven't even interacted once since i've been here it's like it's like he was purposely trying to make it obvious that we had a problem so after that meeting he goes about his business um for the next few days, I've got the woman on my case questioning me. What's going on? The vibe weren't right. I felt an energy. Is there something you need to tell me? Around this time, I started posting content on YouTube saying that um, I weren't coping. I was doing all of this by myself. And um, she was like, I watched your video and you said you were doing it by yourself. You had no reference to your husband. What's really going on? And it got to a point where she was fishing, 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 fishing. And we were separated and I knew we went together. And of course YouTube and of course YouTube didn't know. And the reason why I couldn't bring it to YouTube and say, hey, look, we're done, because people were asking. Around that time people kept asking, what's going on with you? And and you know, like, are you together? What's going on? We haven't seen you guys make content, blah, blah, blah. And I wanted to actually say, we're done, we're, we're not together. I wanted to so badly to kind of just make it official, but I couldn't because I knew social was watching my videos and they didn't know. They didn't know we weren't together. We were still pretending that we were together and that we're in this as a joint thing. So it got to a point where she's now fishing for information. The social worker wants information. She's watching my content. She's trying to read between the lines. And I had to just tell her, I just told her, listen, we're separated. We're not together. Um, and that's that. And once that was out, that is when I could finally really, really end the relationship for good because it's like he kept on coming back or trying to come back because he knew that connection there with my niece and what we had going on, that was the only thing he could use to come back basically so once that was out in the open and social knew that is when i really started to make my plan to be like yep and not let him try and talk to me no more and i was completely done but of course he still tried to come back um he still tried to you know reason with me until I so i have a story time on my channel i will link it right here so when this situation happened we hadn't been together um me and my ex we hadn't been together for four or five months we hadn't been together like we were separated for about four or five months at this point that this story happened and, and after this story happened you gotta go and watch it that's when he decided i'm not trying to fight for you anymore i no longer want to come back fine you wanted a divorce you don't want to be with me you've got your wish so i feel like if that situation didn't happen he would still be trying to fight and he would still be trying to bother, even though I was done. Like, I, I, I told him so many times, I'm like, I don't want to do it. I'm done. Like, I'm so done. And he just weren't listening. He weren't listening. It wasn't until that situation happened that he had decided that he was done because he felt like I was lying to him. He didn't trust me because I was lying to him about it or something. So he said he was done and he's no longer trying to fight for me. The whole moving process was pretty cordial. Um, I obviously found my own place, which I'm in now, with my niece, Aaliyah. Um, it's us two at the moment. Still, there's been no decision on guardianship, but she is still with me. She's been with me the whole entire time. And I am finally out of that relationship for good. I am not officially divorced as of yet, but pending, soon come. Regardless of that, I feel like I can share what happened because for so long, I've tried to protect my relationship online. I've tried to protect him. Um, keep things very secret, private, I, out of embarrassment, main, mainly out of embarrassment and because of the fact that I just kept on going back to him, I kept on accepting things that I never thought I would accept in my life. I, I'd become someone I didn't even know. Like I literally lost myself in that relationship. I lost myself completely. I don't know who that person really is and I'm just so happy that I, I don't have to deal with that anymore i literally just woke up it was that simple i woke up and decided i don't have to deal with this and i'm not going to deal with this anymore and i'm especially not going to raise my niece in an environment 
like that. And I'm not gonna raise my niece for her to feel like men can treat her the way my ex treated me and that's okay. Ne never in a million years. Next step for me is of course divorce to make this all official. One thing I didn't wanna do is pay for the divorce because I feel like I've paid for so much in the relationship as it is. The least he could do is pay for the divorce. Um, it's taken quite a while for me to receive any papers. I haven't been served with any papers and it is taking a little bit longer than I want it to take. So if it takes much longer, I am gonna find myself because I'm done with this chapter. I'm finally at a stage where I can share it with you guys. I've held it in for so long and I just wanna thank everyone who has been watching my videos surrounding my breakup because the support is crazy and I really do appreciate you guys. I don't wanna get emotional now. This is basically the last video of um, the story and I don't wanna get emotional, but the support has just been so overwhelming and to hear how many women have gone through similar stories, same stories and even worse stories, it makes me telling my story worthwhile because when I put the first video out, I was shitting bricks. I thought like, nah, there's no way I'm actually gonna put this out because I'd held it in for so long and I was so embarrassed that putting it out, even though I was out of the relationship, still felt like, oh my gosh, I'm about to get judged. Oh my gosh, people are just gonna judge me for staying with this cheating man and doing this and doing that. And there's been so much support and so much compassion and I just wanna thank you guys so much. <sighs> it's over. That's all I can say. It's over. I'm out of it, never going back, don't wanna go back. I'm good over here. Let me drink this champagne, cause it's a celebration. Sorry, the memory card keeps getting full, so I've gotta say bye really, really quickly, but it's a celebration, I'm out this bitch. <laughs>